Hey, Party Boat Fishing folks. I have an upcoming 22-hour Party Boat Fishing trip and thought it'd be a good chance to show you what I have in my bag. <clears throat> Let's dig in. So this is the bag I bring with me. I'll put a link to it in the description so you guys can see what I chose. Uh, but I would definitely get yourself a good tackle backpack because you're not going to have a lot of space to carry things. So your hands are they're going to be full. You're going to have rods. You might have some other things, maybe a cooler. Uh, I would definitely get yourself a tackle backpack. You can carry your leaders, can carry all your tackle. Uh, sunglasses, got a big compartment at the top. So definitely get yourself a, a tackle oriented backpack. Very, very important. So we'll start with what's in the top. We're just going to go top to bottom. So right in the top, if I can find the top, top sunglasses definitely gonna need some good polarized sunglasses to let you see into the water so if you're fishing and you see any type of uh you know pelagics whether it's mahi mahi amberjack barracuda you're gonna be able to see into the water whereas everybody else that's not wearing polarized sunglasses they're not gonna see them so it gives you an advantage over everybody else in the boat so you're gonna want some polarized sunglasses in the top, so this is the, in my backpack, this is kind of the main area for some of the bigger things. So what I carry with me is I have pre tied leaders. So you'll see I have, uh, this one is four hook leaders, three hook leaders, and then this one is just two hook leaders. So it depends on what I have going on. If I'm not fishing by a lot of people uh, and I have a little space, I generally like to run four hook leaders if I can. And I'll, I'll be making a video showing how I tie up my leaders. Uh, but I like as many baits in the water as possible because the more good lines you have fishing, the better chance you have of catching fish. So I have my leaders. I carry a pair of gloves. Uh, they're just really good for keeping your hands out of the, the abuse. I mean, you're going to get spined. You might get bit. It's just nice having some kind of protectant uh, for your hands so that it's not taking the beating, especially on the longer party boat fishing trips, your hands are going to be in the salt water all day. You're going to be touching bait. You're going to be touching knives. A lot of things that can poke you. It's just really, it's a good idea to have something that protects your hands a little bit. And usually what I'll do is I pair these with, I also carry just nitrile, just nitrile gloves. So what I'll do is I'll put this on underneath then I'll have this glove over top and it makes it really, really a good combination because my hand's not getting fishy. It's not getting dried out from the salt. Uh, and, and before I started doing this, what was happening was I was getting spined a lot and then I would get infections in my hand. You know, just the, the abuse over time uh, coupled with all the little things, you know, you're working with dead squid. There's just a lot of things that can go to get you stuck where you, all of a sudden you have an infection in your hand and it, it, there's a hundred things it could have been from. So I wear nitrile gloves under uh, some more beefy gloves and it, it seems to make all the difference. So I have nitrile gloves in my side compartment where normally you would keep, I mean, you could put a water bottle, you could put whatever you want in there, but I just put nitrile gloves in there and then I carry a pair of thicker gloves. Next, got to have a pair of pliers. Uh, most party boats, there's going to be deck hands on board that are going to help you, you know, take your fish off. Uh, you know, I, I don't need that. I mean, if they're standing there and they want to do it, that's fine. But I always like to have a pair of pliers so that I can get it out. And I like a long pair because if you're catching a lot of sharks, um, you know, the sharks move so fast, you may get your fingers bit if you're just trying to fish that hook out. A nice pair of, of long pliers goes a long way. Ensures all you have all your fingers coming home. Uh, I always carry fish stringers. A lot of party boats you have to buy your own. They do not provide stringers for you. So make sure that you're picking up some stringers. Uh, if not, they're gonna sell them to you. They'll still have them, but you might have to pay $2 for a stringer, which, you know, that's, that, that is the going rate. If you wanna not bring them and just pay what their fee is, that's fine. Uh, but I always pick a couple up. I always carry an extra two, just in case I forget to pick one up, or if somebody that I, you know, am fishing next to needs one, then I have them. Uh, I, I always carry a fish scale. Uh, it's, it's more just so that I know what, what's going on. 
it doesn't have to be anything real critical. I mean, if you're fishing the big fish competition, it is nice to know how big your fish actually is, but uh, it's just cool to know how, how heavy a fish is. So a headlamp, always good to carry with you. Uh, I was recently on a trip where we weren't supposed to be fishing at night, and sure enough, the boat broke down. We were 50 miles offshore. It was an eight hour tow in. So even though we weren't fishing, you know, it, that was February and it was dark at six o'clock and we got back at 1230. So I always carry a headlamp, even if you're not gonna be fishing at night. Never know when you're gonna need it. Always a good thing to have. And if you are doing a 22 hour or 24 or 44, uh, you're definitely gonna want a headlamp just so you can see what's going on. So carry a headlamp. Uh, so this, just a, a portable battery. So you, you never know. I mean, if you want to charge your phone, if you want to charge your camera, uh, if you have some other accessory, maybe you have a, a tablet. Uh, a lot of the party boat fishing trips, I mean, unless you're fishing someplace that you can get to the Gulf Stream really quick, the longer ones, I mean, you're looking at a four hour boat ride, so you can drain your batteries really quick if you're doing something on your phone or something on your tablet, watching a movie. So I always carry one of these. Uh, next, so this is some magic thread. So what I'll do a lot of times is I'll, if I'm putting some bait on the hook, especially if it's a little bit mushy, is I'll take this and I'll wrap it on, on the hook. So it's just stretchy thread, but I'll wrap the bait onto the hook, tie a knot, it stays on the hook a little bit better. So some thread, some zip ties. So uh, you guys don't have to carry zip ties. I, I like carrying them. So if you've been on a party boat before, you've heard them say, okay, you know, you catch an amberjack, you're, you're one on the head or two on the tail. Hey, that's fine. I mean, if you're going to remember that after a bunch of, bunch of fishing and there's, you know, 12 amberjacks in there, if, if you want to deal with whose fish is whose, great. You know, trust one on the tail, two on the head, whatever you're going to do. I just zip tie mine. Uh, there's no question whose fish is whose when there's a zip tie on it. It's my fish. So it, it makes it really, really simple. Um, the crew figures it out. They, I, they, I know they like it. I, I've talked to many of them when I just hand them a zip tie. And they say, hey, this is great. You know, I, They can't tell me how many times they've had people that don't remember what fish is theirs. And somebody's just waiting at the end for what fish is left over or who isn't claiming a fish. Because they think, well, that, that must be my fish. I just bring big zip ties. <laughs> problem, problem solved. Uh, just a little bit of real grease, real butter. Uh, never know. Yeah, I've had to grease reels mid-trip. Uh, you, you never really know what's going on. I, you know, unfortunately, you're trying to keep stuff out of it, the salt, the sand, the grime, but sometimes you have to grease them. I mean, it's just, I've had them before where more surf fishing where it's been dropped in the ocean, it's got sand in it. You got to do an emergency cleaning. Nice to butter it back up. So I carry a little bit of real butter with me. Um, and then up here, I carry just a bait knife, so just something that I can, you know, fillet a pinfish or fillet a sardine. Uh, it, it's nothing, it's not that sharp, but I think these are six dollars on Cabela's. Nothing, nothing real expensive. Uh, hook sharpener. So, I mean, if you're going to get snagged on bottom, you need to just put a nice little edge on the hook. A good thing to carry with you. A little hook sharpener. And then longer pliers. So I have that one. Uh, this one has a scissors on it too. Uh, I've been doing this long enough that one pliers is never good enough. You, you never, never really know. I mean, you think you have enough, but it doesn't usually work like that. You always want an extra pliers, especially uh, if you drop them or it breaks or somebody else next to you needs one. It, it's nice to be able to offer that to the people fishing next to you. So this is everything in the top compartment. Uh, we'll move on to a couple other things. I always carry some knot pullers. So this is something you can make. This is just, uh, I think it's three quarter inch PVC conduit, uh, but it's really, really beneficial if you ever need to tighten up a knot. So if you're retying a leader, you know, you can't pull it hard enough with your hand to tighten up fishing line. You just can't do it. Um, so what I do is I just, I, I took uh, some, grips, put them over some conduit. So you just wrap it up. You know, if this were two ends of a liter, you just wrap it up. And again, you know, you're gonna, you're probably gonna wet it down, uh, but it just lets you pull it really tight without it digging into the hands. Um, you know, I, I showed you the gloves that I wear. 
the gloves that I wear, you know, anybody that ties a lot of leaders, you're used to getting cuts right in your pinky fingers here um, from that line. When you go to tighten it up, it just it sinks down and it pulls and it ends up cutting you. Um, again, one of the reasons I chose to start wearing gloves is I need to tighten down these leaders, you know, battle tested so that when I need to tighten them and I trust that they're they're exactly where they need to be. Uh, I know that I've put enough stress on them that that knot's not coming undone. And I can't tell you how many times that I've found a flaw in my knots using these. So I highly suggest you make some knot tighteners. It, it, they're so cheap to make and they're very, very important in making sure that when you need to fight a big fish, your knots are ready to go. I mean, I don't know if you guys can see this, but you know, when I pull my knots tight, I'm cutting into these and that's how tight they need to be. They need to be tight enough uh, that they're seeing almost that full breaking strength uh, before they go into the water. So, knot tighteners, sunscreen, you know, fortunately I'm a redhead. I mean, there's there's no way around it. I need sunscreen. I, I, I can't deal without it. If I don't wear sunscreen, bad things happen. So I always bring some sunscreen. Uh, you're definitely gonna want some, especially if you're doing a longer trip you're gonna want some kind of sun protection. Even if you have a neck gaiter that you're gonna pull up over your face, uh, you need something for your lips, your nose, your ears. You need some kind of sunscreen. Uh, a venting tool. So if you're gonna be fishing out deep, you're gonna need a venting tool. Uh, it just, it's the ethical way of getting that fish prepared to go back down. You know, if they come up all bloated, you need to use a venting tool or, or a descending device. In some, some areas you have to have them. So check your laws and regulation. You know, either the boat's going to provide them or you need to bring them with you, but a venting tool is really important. Uh, good little scissors. So I can't tell you how many times that I've needed a good scissors to cut braided line, to cut a lot of different things, but a good little scissors goes a long way. Um, this probably gets used more often than it should. In fact, I probably need to get a new one. I got rust developing on this one, but uh, a good little scissors goes a long way. Uh, tape measure. Again, if you're party boat fishing, which... You know, that's what I'm going to do. They're going to have a tape measure for you. But why rely on somebody else? You know, have a tape measure. It's the responsible thing to do. Uh, also, you know, just because it's big enough doesn't mean that you don't want to know what length it is. I mean, just because just you catch a 60-inch fish, you want to know it's a 60-inch fish. You know, carry a tape measure with you. Uh, I, I definitely would bring one. A Sharpie. I, I always... <laughs> it's, it's funny how many often I end up using a Sharpie on writing on bags, writing on baits... Uh, writing on my rods, you know, if I have something wrong with a rod, I'll write myself a note on the rod. Uh, hey, you know, you need to check that, you know, second second guide. So I always carry a Sharpie with me. So that's going to be everything up there. What I have in the side pocket here, so this is primarily, this is my bait pocket. So what I carry in this pocket is I carry a little, uh, just a little tackle box. So this is everything I use either before the trip or during the trip to catch bait. So I have a bunch of little hooks in there. So I have a lot of little sinkers. You're probably not gonna be using the little sinkers while you're out on the boat, but I have a bunch of little hooks, a bunch of little beads. Um, this is for primarily catching panfish. Uh, I'm sorry, pinfish. So if you if you wanted to catch little pinfish, you know, I carry just a bunch of tiny little gold hooks that you probably can't see. Um, I carry a bunch of little treble hooks. But what I'm doing is before my party boat fishing trip, I'm gonna try and find a near inlet and I'm gonna fish around some rock bars. I'm gonna fish around some oyster pads uh, and just try and find something that I can catch that I can carry with me out in a bucket with an aerator to get me out there so I have live bait. Again, I just carry some little sinkers. But this is, when I go party boat fishing, this is all the gear I need whether I'm catching bait or big fish, everything is in here. It's all, it's the one-stop shop. So my little tackle box. I also carry um, some Pro-Cure pinfish gel. So if nothing else is working, it's worth a try. Uh, I can't say that I've ever had a trip saved by this, but I can tell you I've caught fish while using it. Yeah, it's worth a try. Yeah. I, you never know. You never know. Uh, there's plenty of times where I'm going to be fishing with an artificial bait and I want to add just a little bit of attractant to it. You know, maybe the fish are being really finicky. So uh, this is just Pro Cure Pinfish Super Gel. Again, it's what I carry. You know, you don't have to carry it. Uh, I carry some sabiki rigs. 
So again, if I'm out there and I didn't have a chance to catch bait beforehand, I'm gonna bring some sabiki rigs out there with me, especially on these longer trips, like the 22 hour. So the 22 hour trip, we start fishing at 1 a.m. Well, at 1 a.m., I'm gonna try and catch some bait. Uh, I'm gonna bring some glow-in-the-dark beads. I'm gonna see if I can get some pinfish so that I can catch the grouper bite once the sun comes up. But I always carry some sabiki rigs with me. Uh, you can carry some bigger ones. These ones are size 14, 12, 12, and 10. So I know they make them, I mean, they make some big ones up to one odd. Carry what you want, but I think if you go from anywhere to 14 to 10, you know, for most of your small fish, you're going to be able to catch some bait uh, and have it with you. And then what I also have is I have some of these small little leaders that are for, they're basically like sabiki rigs, but they're not sabiki rigs. Uh, they're just a dropper loop. So again, you know, what I would be doing is I would be putting some, maybe the, some of those small gold hooks on them. And I would be dropping this over the side, you know, with uh, maybe a four to five ounce weight, uh, putting those little gold hooks on them. Again, while I'm out on the reef, so we may be in 120 feet of water, but I'm going to drop this over the side with those tiny hooks on them just to see if I can catch some small pinfish. Uh, and even if it's not a pinfish, anything that's going to bite on that, you know, just these little tiny, I don't know if you can see them, but just these little tiny dropper rigs with some tiny hooks on there with small pieces of squid. You know, most of the boats are going to provide you with squid. Just cut little pieces, something little. So even a small vermilion or a grunt isn't going to grab them. You know, anything that's tiny enough to bite that, that's exactly what you're looking for bait. I mean, you could get a mutton snapper. Uh, it's, it's just really going to change the type of fish that you have a chance at catching. So I recommend this. I think this is 12 pound floral. Uh, I would bring them with you. So that's everything that's in the side pouch. What I carry with me in the other side pouches. So these are my leader pouches. So in these leader pouches, I bring 60 pound fluorocarbon, 40 pound fluorocarbon. So it, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking 60 and 40, that's not enough. Uh, you, you're going after the big fish. You need something bigger than 60 pound. Well, for most cases, this is gonna get you where you need to go. Uh, you're not gonna need anything heavier than this. Unless you're fig fishing big gag grouper, uh, you don't need the 80, 120 pound. I mean, if you're going out with a, with a captain that really is dialed in on the grouper and you guys are targeting big gags, yeah, you're gonna need 120 pound I, or, or up. Uh, but for party boat fishing, usually 60, 40 pound fluorocarbon is gonna be plenty. However, I also bring, I bring 80 pound mono. I also bring 60 pound mono. So between these two monos, I mean, 80 pound mono, that's gonna get you most of what you need. So don't have to bring them. And I double up on mono and fluorocarbon only because if I feel like maybe I'm seeing people bring up fish, you know, I, I'm always had a swivel, trying to see what other people are catching, you know, did that, what did that guy catch it on? What did that guy catch it on? You know, are we seeing snapper being brought up? Are we seeing uh, barracuda being brought up? I'm gonna switch to whatever I think is best. And if in the situation, if I, I usually start with mono, if mono is just not working, I'll go to fluorocarbon. Uh, sometimes it makes a difference. I can tell you most of the time, mono gets the job done. Uh, it has better abrasion resistance. I don't seem to have any problem fishing mono. I, the fish don't seem to see it. But if for some reason the fish are being finicky, which I have been out there and the fish are finicky, and I can't tell you that fluoro saved the, the fishing trip. I can tell you, I caught fish. It didn't hurt. It's something to try. I mean, when things aren't working, you gotta try something. So fluorocarbon, mono, uh, I would definitely bring it with you. So this is what I have in my side pouches. The main compartment. So this, this is the business end of the backpack. Uh, so I carry a bunch of, bunch of different tackle boxes, some thin, some, some larger, but every one of them is specifically designed for something. So top tackle box. So I'm carrying all my hooks, glow beads, jigs, small jigs if I needed to float a line. Uh, I carry swivels, split rings, I, you know, all the terminal tackle that I'm going to need for the most part are going to be in one main con uh, container here. So assist hooks, again, almost anything I need if I'm going to tie up a rig is going to be in here. 
swivels. So that's that's the main compartment. Again, the hooks I'm going to carry are I carry size two, two ot. Sorry, two ot, three ot, five fine, five heavy, seven and nine. So I'm carrying all in line. So these are all in line circle hooks. I don't carry any offset circle hooks. All inline circle hooks. Uh, I've never had any problems with them. I, I, li I like fishing circle hooks. I mean, if you want to catch a fish and you want to be able to let it go, definitely carry circle hooks. I mean, you don't need to be using J hooks for, for catching fish out there. I do carry some J hooks for, you know, if I'm fishing jigs, I need to tie up a rig for it with a jig. Uh, I'll definitely carry and, and use J hooks, but for the most part, if I'm fishing live bait, I'm not using a lot of J hooks. I do carry some other J hooks. You know, if I'm fishing kingfish or barracuda, something on the surface, I have some smaller. These are five odd uh, J hooks. I'll use those, but I'm almost always fishing circle hooks uh, out there. And I would strongly advise that you do, uh, unless you're fishing one hook where you're going to be setting the hook. I mean, the beauty of circle hooks is you don't have to set the hook. So I usually am using enough weight where the weight is going to also help set the hook. Uh, it's going to drive that point in. So all, all you need to do is as soon as that point starts to get seated, which is what that weight is doing, you know, the weight is starting the hook and then all I'm doing is reeling or lifting. You know, I'm not setting the hook. You know, the, I've heard the saying, you know, don't be a jerk, just reel strongly advised with circle hooks. You don't need to do the, you don't need to set the hook. But if you are fishing with J hooks, you do need to set the hook. You need to get that, that meat past the barb. Uh, but the beauty of circle hooks is it's, it's going to drift out. It's going to go into the corner of the mouth. And after that, it's set. Uh, you know, just the angle of that hook makes it very hard for fish to come off. But if you are fishing J hooks, always got to keep that pressure. Uh, and you got to set the hook. So I use circle hooks. Uh, I've had a lot of good luck with them. Uh, I, I would highly advise that you try circle hooks if you don't. Uh, and if you are using circle hooks, great, keep using them. So that's the terminal hooks that I use. Here's another little tackle box. So this tackle box, I carry uh, a cuda tube. So if I see some barracuda, I like catching barracuda. I know a lot of people don't like them. I love catching them. So I carry a cuda tube. I also carry some wire line rigs that I've tied up. Uh, for kingfish, for barracuda. Uh, in fact, here's some, some smaller ones that I tie. They're two hook rigs. These are primarily going to be for kingfish. Uh, but I can tell you what, so I was on a party boat fishing trip last summer and I had one of these floating with a sardine. So a whole sardine just bobbing up and down under a balloon. You know, it was wire line with two treble hooks. Caught a mahi-mahi. So you never really know what you're going to catch out there. But I can tell you that uh, mahi seem to be so aggressive. You know, unless you're fishing some really pressured water, the wire line with the treble hook seems to be playing. So I always carry some pre-rigged up. You don't want to be tying a haywire twist out there. Uh, Pre-rig them up so you're ready to go. So if you need them, you're already you're already rigged and ready. Uh, I also carry again. I have so this was also I, I have some bigger split rings here. Uh, I also have some solid rings. So if I'm doing vertical jigging, uh, you don't always want to have split rings on everything. You want some kind of solid ring tied up on your jigs. I carry my solid rings. I have more beads. I have some bigger swivels for certain rigs that I tie. I have, and, and these are I snap swivels. I have some regular inline swivels if I'm tying leaders up. Uh, anything from, I, I personally like to oversize it. So I've done 150 and up. You know, the, I think these are 250 or 300, uh, but I'll carry anything up to 400 pound swivels just to make sure that, again, I, I'm not worried about over, overdoing the swivel, uh, but I like to have something that's beefy, that's going to freely rotate. And sometimes when you take small swivels and you push them to the weight limit, they don't rotate as freely. Uh, that's their breaking strength. So I like bigger swivels. It just gives you a little bit of safety factor. It's going to allow you to make sure that that you know, that ball bearing is freely floating uh, in between there, so it's not binding. So I'm carrying some loop through snaps. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm taking a balloon, I'm blowing it up, I'm putting it on the snap, and this is gonna be my float rig with a, with a bobber stop. So that the wave is jigging it up and down. 
uh, it adds motion to your dead bait. If you're going to be using a live bait, you know, probably not as important, but with a dead bait, it definitely helps. So this is, this is that tackle box. Your weights, I'm not carrying anything from, you know, smaller weights that I'm using on my float rigs to biggest weight I carry is a 20 ounce bank sinker. Uh, highly recommend you carry a variety of weights. Uh, you never know what your current conditions are going to start. Uh, I always start with usually a 12, you know, but uh, I'm going to do a whole video on currents and making sure that your positioning and how you're dropping down uh, in your weight is very important. Uh, it definitely keeping you out of the tangles. So weights are extremely important. You got the, if you're going to buy the lead and you're going to make the investment and you want to catch the most fish, this is the most important tackle box I'm carrying with me is the different leads that, that I have. So anything from one pound, again, all the way down to eight ounces. You never know. But if you're going to be fishing at 120 feet or more in the Gulf Stream, you need a big assortment of weight. Uh, again, this box is the most important box I carry with me. So that's all my leads. Uh, next one, so I carry a lot of, so these are just diamond jigs. Uh, I carry an assortment from 16 ounce all the way down to four ounces. Kind of, again, it depends on how you're fishing, but I like carrying some diamond jigs. You don't have to carry them. This is more uh, if I'm feeling frisky. If I'm going to try something that's a little bit off the wall, uh, or if I'm going to do some jigging for grouper, I like carrying some diamond jigs with me. Lastly, this, this is my, this is my all encompassing bait bag. So I carry a bunch of vertical jigs with me. Uh, if I'm going to be fishing jacks or if I want to fish for some pelagics, I'm carrying vertical jigs. Never know when you might get into a vertical jig bite. I'm also carrying some big lead head jigs. So this one is, this is going to be seven ounces. So I'm carrying a bunch of these. I have some smaller ones too, all the way down. This is a six, um, I have some fives. I even have some 12 ounces for if you're, if I need to get down deep, uh, maybe I'm going to put uh, an artificial bait or a grunt strip or something down there. I have some 12 ounce jigs. And then I also have some teaser baits. So these are teaser jigs. These are flies that I've tied up. So these are on about three ounce or three O hooks, but a bunch of pinfish mimicry jigs. I also carry, uh, some squid imitation jigs, just little things that might trigger a bite. Again, if the bite's tough, you never know. So I'm, I'm also going to bring some, uh, some, some teaser baits with me. So this is something I'm going to slide over my, you know, over my three hook, four hook, two hook dropper loops. Um, those high low rigs. It's again, it just catches the fish attention. So something just to get, to get the, you know, the fish to bite your hook. If you have, you know, 40 other people on the boat, 70 other people, hundred other people on the boat, why is that fish going to bite your hook? If you can give them some profile, something to catch their attention, some flash, some size, that's what's going to get you a bite. So I have some fish mimicry ones. I also have some squid ones. You know, just something that, that gets their attention and pulls them to your bait. Uh, definitely important to carry. And then lastly, I have a bunch of topwater baits. So, of course, they're in a big mess, but I carry a bunch of topwater baits. Never know. I mean, if you're fish, you see a mahi, if you see a barracuda, uh, just a spoon, you want something that you can throw at them that might get you a bite. But you, you want a variety of baits. Again, you never know what's going to be out there. You know, you're fishing for what is there at the moment. Uh, you can fish all you want. If you want to catch a mahi mahi on a party boat, you can fish all day. If there's no mahi mahi to catch, you're not going to catch a mahi mahi. It's just the way it is. I fish for what's there. So if I see a mahi-mahi, if I hear people saying that they saw a mahi-mahi, okay, now I'm fishing mahi-mahi. Uh, if I see an amberjack, if I see a mutton snapper, you know, I'm, I'm constantly changing what I'm fishing for so that I'm making sure I'm targeting what's actually out there. You know, you can go into it thinking you're going to catch all these fish, but if you don't have the rigs to catch multiple different species for what's there that day, you know, you're not going to have a successful trip. You need to make sure that you have a wide variety of baits, you have a wide variety of rigs, that you come prepared to target a wide variety of fish, uh, or you're only going to catch grunts, uh, maybe some other bottom fish that are, maybe catch some vermilions. 
but that's all you're going to get. So you need to make sure that you're bringing the baits and you're prepared to target whatever you want to go after. Uh, so that's that tackle box. The last tackle box, I, I'm sorry, the last item I carry with me. Uh, again, you're going to get provided squid, but I always bring, whoop, I always bring some artificial bait. Hopefully that backpack stays up. Some big twister tails, some fake shad, again, some other, you know, some glow in the dark shad, some white shrimp, uh, again, some finesse, you know, minnow, what is this? This is called a hoochie coochie. I always bring the hoochie coochie. To be honest, I always do bring it, but as you can see, it's not even open. So I've never used these, uh, but I would definitely use them if I was targeting maybe something that was going to be more of a, a jack bite. You know, some of these I see are the paddle tails, some of the straight tails. So a variety of baits. Again, I always want to bring something so that, again, if, if I were seeing Mahi Mahi and I need to throw, you know, a jig head along the surface and reel really fast to try and get into the bite, I'm prepared. I, I'm not going to be uh, undergunned. I, I'm bringing all the items I need to catch fish to make sure that when I spend my time, I'm getting the best chance of catching the fish that I want. So this is what I bring with me. If there's any items I've missed, if there's anything that you say, hey, I always bring this with me, please let me know. And thanks for watching, everybody. You know, what's going to be coming up is some more party boat fishing uh, tips. So the rigs I bring, the rods I have with me, why I use what I have. Uh, I'm also going to be talking about where to fish on a party boat, how to fish on a party boat. You know, if you're stuck in side boat position, bow position, back position, you know, how do you make that position work as best as possible? Um, there's going to be a lot of upcoming videos. If there's any topics you want me to cover, please let me know. Uh, but we'll, we'll end it with uh, Ripley here. So this is this is your typical dog bait. Uh, this is a bone with a you know standard uni knot. I've tried them all. Uni is the best for this application. Uh, we'll just see what's biting today. Got to let it sit. Uh, they're, they're biting a little bit. I felt a couple nibbles there. They're light biters. Light biters. Light biters. Well, I'm going to keep fishing. We'll see what happens. Uh, stick with us. More to come.